And uh, we went to go to the trading floor in Chicago and bring in Scott Geekus right now. He's with Walsh Trading Incorporated. <clears throat> Scott, uh, before we opened up this morning, we actually had uh, just a little bit of a shot in the arm for the soybean trade. We had an overnight export sale that was announced that may have uh, kind of come out of the blue. Uh, it was 131,000 tons of soybeans. They were sold to unknown destinations once again. And it was actually split up. 110,000 tons was for this marketing year, 21,000 tons for the next marketing year. Uh, soybeans have been surging ahead here so far today, and the corn market uh, has been trying to regain its footing. Let's take a look at where we're now trading in the grains on the corn. So far, we have the July contract down three quarters of 393 and a half, been on both sides of unchanged. Uh, new crop December is up a half. In the soybean trade that I mentioned, here you have the July now six and three quarters higher at 828 and three quarters, and uh, November up seven at 855 and a half. Now, what about the wheat market today? Well, in the wheat, we have Chicago July down eight at 470 and three quarters, and in Kansas City today, we've had pressure there down five and a half at 430 and a half. Minneapolis wheat, on July is now trading uh, five and a quarter lower at 537 and three quarters. What's the talk of the trade right behind you on the trading floor when it comes to the grains here today? Yeah, when it comes to the grains, I mean, the headline talk or headline risk to Trump effect is still always going to be there. Uh, but main focus is definitely going on the weather. Within the next 14 days here in the Midwest, as well as well as some of the other parts of the country, you're seeing a lot of still, a lot of wet moisture, a lot of heavy rains. That's definitely going to take into effect. That why, that's one of the reasons why you're seeing such a big ramp up in the last few days. Uh, I expect some profit taking to come on a little bit here and there, but <clears throat> I don't think there's going to be any follow through to the downside. I think we're going to continue to have that bullish catalyst, which is obviously needed for the farmers, but it, everything is going to completely depend on the weather as far as next week's uh, progress planting report. Uh, the planting report this month or this uh, last Monday just came out uh, well under expectations. Uh, some of the producing states are even below that average number. So we're going to keep an eye on the weather. That's definitely the main focus driving things for the next few days. All right. We'll come back in a moment and take a look at our cattle and hog trade as well with Scott Geekus. He's our guest and we'll be right back. Let's go back to the trading floor in Chicago and talk with Scott Geekus. He's with Walsh Trading right now and uh, find out what's going on in this livestock sector here. Scott, we'll uh, take a quick look at some prices and then I want to get your take on what the traders are talking about here. On the uh, live cattle trade first, we are down, but not where we were on the open. Uh, we have June now back to unchanged, actually, and there it went one tick higher, so maybe I uh, gave it the spurs there. Uh, 110.88 is the last trade, about a half a dollar off our earlier low. We have August live cattle down 18, a 108.10. October down 17. <clears throat> Let's move on to the feeder cattle trade. Now, in the feeders, we had some fairly significant losses early on, and they have elevated off of that, where we have August now only 13 lower at 142.88, and now September down 25 at 143.93. That uh, August contract is almost a dollar off of its low of the day now, back within about a nickel of our high of the day. How about lean hogs? Well, lean hogs had been under pressure in uh, some contracts, but now they're all higher. June lean hogs up 55 at 90.65 and July 85 higher at 92.22. So what's going on here in this livestock trade? A little bit of a firmer tone all of a sudden. Is this uh, somehow related to what's going on in the corn market? Uh, well, yeah, yes and no. So it's a little bit of both, but I think more to the expected, especially with cattle. Now, cattle, you're, it, it's been completely oversold. Now we're, you know, it's waffling back and forth between that 110 level. That's definitely going to be a key part into it. But with the expected seasonal demand to be stronger than expected, uh, the, the expectation that now we can uh, export to Japan, Japan lifting those restrictions as definitely a bullish catalyst. So we're expecting the, the cattle market in the near term to have a little bit more bump up. You know, the cutouts from yesterday were a little bit higher. That's expected. That is definitely a bullish catalyst. Now we're just waiting for the cash to follow through. If we can get a bump up in the cash, cash has been weaker. You know, we expect this market to push a little bit higher, especially going into the seasonal demand. Have you heard traders talking much about this USMCA agreement? Uh, yeah, well, we're going to see how this is going to play out, and that's going to also go into effect with the, with the hog market as well. You know, with the hog market, everybody I've been talking to, doesn't matter who they are, everyone is expecting the hog market to move higher. 
Everybody's long. Everybody looks for the upside calls moving. Uh, that is confirmed on a technical basis with the calls that are being traded today. Coming in today, the 94-100 call spread has traded about 200 times. 200 normally is not that big of a block in the hog market. Is it significant? It's definitely something to pay attention to. So with the other bullish catalyst with the hog market, uh, rumors are that if we if Mexico releases that 20 percent tariff on U.S. pork, you know, we expect them to have a little bit more exports. If we see any type of imports or exports coming out of the U.S., that's definitely going to spark some bullish catalyst and you're going to see a oh, okay. pretty sharp spike higher. All right. Good information. Thank you, Scott. I appreciate it. Scott Geekus of Wall Trading in Chicago.